Throughout history, bread has been a vital staple of life. Archaeological evidence suggests that pre-Neolithic cultures uh, baked a very simple flat bread on hot stones. And sourdough breads have been made for millennia. First century Romans observed the Celts of Gaul uh, skimming the foam off of beer to create a, a lighter kind of bread. By the 13th century, bread became highly regulated as an early form of wage and price controls. Unscrupulous bakers who cut corners to increase profits faced potentially heavy punishment. Such regulation was common throughout Europe, and early documents show that uh, at least an attempt was made for doing the same thing in 18th century colonial America. Over the coming weeks, we're going to focus on 18th century breads. We're going to begin our journey with one of the simplest forms, the ship's biscuit. This biscuit is known by many names. Uh, most of the time it was called just biscuit. Sometimes it was called hard biscuit or brown biscuit, uh, sea biscuit, and ship's bread. Now many today might want to call it hardtack, but hardtack is really a 19th century term that was popularized during the American Civil War. These 18th century biscuits, they're not like today's buttery, flaky version that we serve along with sausage gravy for breakfast. These biscuits were not made to be enjoyed, they were made out of necessity. So ship's captains faced a continual challenge of having enough food on board to feed a large crew for a long journey. Food spoilage was really his greatest concern. Fresh bread rapidly became moldy on long trips, and so did stored flour, which would go rancid and bug-ridden. So, uh, hard biscuit is really born out of necessity. It's a means of food preservation. If it was prepared properly and stored properly, it would last for a year or more. In addition to preservation, the uh, biscuit form also helped in portability and in dividing the rations when it came time. Uh, soldiers and sailors uh, typically got one pound of bread a day, and the biscuits were usually made in about a four ounce form. So when it came time to distribute them, each sailor or soldier would get four biscuits. Biscuits from London were considered to be the highest quality, the most resistant to mold and to insects. Uh, they were really the standard by which all the other biscuit makers aspired to but not all biscuits were the same quality. In a book called Adventures of Roderick Random from 1748, we read this uh, little section here. Every biscuit, like a piece of clockwork, moved of its own internal impulse, occasioned by myriads of insects that dwelt within it. There are other counts of sailors opening up barrels marked sea biscuits, and only to find them filled to overflowing with roaches, the sea biscuits having long since disappeared. Biscuits were not only used by sailors, but also soldiers and travelers, travelers of just about any sort. Uh, traders many times used them to bargain with the Indians, and they were also thought to have medicinal properties. Uh, they used them in treating uh, edema and indigestion and gout. Just as biscuits had different names and different uses, they were also made in different ways. The term biscuit has its origins in the word twice baked. Uh, many 18th century recipes call for bread rolls to be baked, sliced into slices, and then baked again. Uh, these are also known as rusks. Ben Franklin, in his memoir, also called this type of biscuit the true original biscuit, much superior to the unleavened variety. But it's this unleavened variety that we're going to do today. We've preheated our oven and allowed it to cool to a medium-low heat. If you're doing this in a, in a home oven, about 300 to 350 degrees. Our ingredients for these biscuits, very simple. We've got some whole wheat flour. You're definitely going to need some salt. And then we need enough water to make a very stiff dough. So let's get these mixed up. I'm going to probably work with about two pounds of flour here. Enough to make eight four ounce biscuits. We're going to just uh, guess our amount of salt and get that mixed in and now let's pour in that water until we get a good stiff dough.
I've got this larger loaf kneaded here. Uh, now it's time to break this up into the individual approximately four ounce uh, portions for each biscuit and then I'll form those up individually. Each one of these I'm going to need just a little bit more and get it into its patty or biscuit, final biscuit shape. These biscuits are ready to go on the baking tray here. We're going to arrange them. They're not going to rise up so we can put them right next to each other. We want to make sure that they're the final proper thickness, about a half an inch, maybe a little thinner. And we need to prick them so that they don't puff up too much. Okay, these are ready for the oven. We're gonna put these in and they're gonna bake for two to three hours at that low temperature. Uh, you wanna watch them to make sure they don't burn. It's been three hours. Uh, these should have baked long enough. Uh, many times in the time period these would be baked and then pulled out they'd let them cool and then they'd bake them again the next day probably at a lower temperature uh, to drive out any excess moisture and for very long-term storage they might bake these three or four times let's take a look Hard biscuits could be eaten just as they are, but it was never thought of as an enjoyable event. Uh, many times they were soaked in wine, brandy, or sack to soften them up a little. Cooks would also take the biscuits and they would uh, grind them up or powder them by putting them in a bag and beating them with a hammer. Uh, then take that, the crumbs that are left over and use them like flour. This crunched up biscuit tastes a lot like raisin bran without the raisins. While this isn't the most flavorful recipe that we've done so far, it's certainly a very significant food source for people in the 18th century. All the things you've seen here today, all the cooking implements, all the clothing, these things are available in our print catalog on our website. I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to follow us on Facebook.